Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. Here are the top 10 real people who visited hell and lived to tell about it. But before we dive in with those spooky stories, we have a quick message from our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends has taken over, and rightfully so. Gaming will never be the same again. Raid is the first game to bring a true console level experience right to your phone. Finally, I've waited so long. They've set the bar extremely high and there's no going back now. Gameplay is so HD, I feel like I'm watching a movie every single time. Explore millions of champion combinations and master countless tactics as you take on raid bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles, and player versus player arena matches. With hundreds of artifacts to equip and over 600 champions blessed with unique skills, you can build your team, develop your champions, and raid your way. I've been playing raid for a while now, and these are some of the champions I've been using and winning with. Royal Guard, okay, I've been using Royal Guard for one thing only, taking on bosses. I am terrible with bosses, so I need Royal Guard, really. He has an extremely powerful ability that scales damage based on enemy max HP, in addition to all the other damage that it deals already. Add to that his default skill, which decreases the enemy's defense, and his third skill, which hits four times, and he can both paralyze a boss and deal incredible damage, all in one package. Easy peasy, right? Royal Guard is practically a legendary. Like I said, I'm lousy at boss battles, so they really come in handy. I'm also using Skyle of the Drakes, the most popular legendary champion in Raid, not just because everybody gets her for free, but because she's also extremely powerful. A shocking wave stun paired with a default skill that drains the target's turn meter and slows them down. Well, good game, folks. It's over. And let's also not forget her passive. 10% healing every time she starts her turn and a revive just to round things out. She's amazing, no matter where you put her. And there's tons happening in Raid this month. New champions, an upgrade to Tag Arena, and a full schedule of special events. But here's the main event. Raid's currently running a special Deliana Chase event where you can get your hands on the amazing Deliana, a brand new legendary champion from the High Elves faction, just by logging in. It's that easy. All you have to do is log in and play Raid for seven days between right now and July 20th. And boom, you'll get Deliana for free. That's it. Play seven times, easy. I'll play six times on the way home today. Deliana is one of the strongest support champions in the entire game and can help carry your team get past many of Raid's tougher challenges. You don't want to miss out. This is the best time to get started in Raid. And if you click my link in the description or scan my QR code here on the screen, you'll get a free starter pack worth almost $40. Like that's huge. You do not want to miss out. Hit that QR code. We're talking three free champions at once. Misery Cord, Tiger Soul, and Romero. Plus 10 Magic XP Brews, 10 Force XP Brews, and 10 Spirit Brews. That's a lot, that's huge. They gave only one champion in the past, so don't miss your last chance to get such great rewards. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here. The gifts keep coming. All new players, listen up. Once you're in game, just enter promo code MYDELIANA to get your hands on everything. It's that simple. Get 50 XP brews to instantly get your legendary hero, Deliana, to max level 50, as well as tons of silver. And it's that easy. Just click the link in the description and I'll see you in the game. Good luck. Kicking off our list at number 10. Tamara Laro. We'll begin this list in 1985 when a young Tamara Laro sadly attempted to take her own life. Thankfully, Tamara did survive, but the time in between has really stuck with her. And of course, those who have heard her survival story, including myself. That's why I had to start this list off with her. After her life had seemingly ended, Tamara recalls a fiery pit. She wasn't alone, however. There were hundreds of other souls all in pain, screaming in agony. They were all crowded together, but they weren't able to communicate. It was a horrible sight. But on top of all of this, as horrible as it sounds already, there was a creature flying around with multiple dragon heads. Yeah, that's when a bright hand reached down to carry her back up to heaven and then ultimately back to life, thankfully. Number nine, Howard Storm. With many of these cases on our list today, the victims are quite religious. Their beliefs were already in a specific direction before being summoned to the gates of hell, but not Howard Storm. No, Howard was an atheist until his experience that fateful day in June 1985. He woke up in his hospital bed, but this time he was a spirit. Yeah, that ought to be jarring. At that point, a group, not a central figure, but a group led him down this dark, narrow hallway. The tour guide demons eventually started to attack Howard, but at that point, a voice appeared and told them to start praying to God. Yeah, I would assume if there's ever a time to believe, this would be it. This is the turning point, I bet. His first prayer was enough to do the trick, and after he came back to life, he immediately became a United Church of Christ minister. Yeah, that's game-changing, more than fair. Number eight. 
Georgie Ritchie. Back in December 1943, one Dr. Georgie Ritchie was sadly losing a battle to pneumonia. In turn, the man passed away for 10 minutes. Now, it doesn't seem like a very long time when you're alive, but in the land down under, I'm sure it would be quite grueling. Ritchie recalls his spirit lifting from his body before being assisted on this tour throughout the afterlife. Now, this is something you won't forget. Ritchie remembers seeing one area, a section rather, that was reserved for hell. The people in that area were reaching out for cigarettes or they were grasping for an alcoholic beverage. They're battling this vice. Quite deep, really, but another part of this hell was much more violent and less poetic. This part had the souls of the dead fighting one another. For 10 minutes, Richie had to endure this literal hell and we're glad you made it back, Richie. Number seven, Angie Fenimore. Back in 1991, Angie saw the underworld after she attempted to take her own life. But before she was thankfully saved, she recalls visiting hell as well, under this sort of life review, as she calls it. Angie remembers reliving her entire life through images as she was fading away, which for starters, reminds us that you may see your life flash before your eyes. We've heard that before. So already this seems to be pretty legit. And then it turned into complete darkness. She also saw other people who seemed to have been in a dark, similar place. They were lost and seemed too miserable to even notice one another. Horrible stuff. Since her experience, Angie has been named Her Royal Majesty Princess Angie Fenimore, Divine Royal of Utah, and the Prophetess and Leader of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latte Saints. Number six, Kenneth Hagen. Another visit, another book. It's not surprising that many of these cases result in the victim writing a book afterwards, right? They're believers now. Kenneth experienced this at a young age. It was caused due to a heart condition that led to his near-death experience. So the book afterwards, titled I Believe in Visions, Reverend Hagen recalls his body going numb. He recalls losing feelings as his heart stopped and then he began to descend down. Born and raised in a Christian family, Reverend Kenneth Hagen experienced hell and then blackness, darker than anybody has ever seen before. This seems to be a common theme. It's almost like you go down through this narrow, something narrow and dark. It's almost like a tunnel. A lot of these counts are pretty similar, so it's starting to really feel... Legit, I'm terrified, we're only halfway there, let's do it. Number five, Sister Josepha Menendez. Now with many of these cases, these visits to the underworld, they're one and done, but not Sister Josepha Menendez. No, she claims to have visited hell several times in her life. I've been to Scotland twice and I would love to go back, but I have no intention on ever visiting hell once or twice, never, never, ever, ever, no thank you. Back in 1922 and 1923, she wrote about her experiences in hell and they sound, as you would have guessed, pretty horrible. Experiences like being squeezed between two burning planks getting pierced by red hot irons, and of course, the horrible smell. Sulfur, there's something burning, it's just not ideal. She said nothing on earth can ever be compared to it. Ugh, I feel sick reading these, this is horrible. Number four, Sister Faustina. One of the oldest accounts of hell, or rather oldest accounts of a visitor for the underworld, Sister Faustina was a Polish nun from the late 1930s, and she claims to visit hell. Again, imagine this time, like so long ago, and then out of nowhere, a nun comes forward with claims like such. That's, that's pretty alarming. To this day, it's still unclear whether Sister Faustina's experience was a vision or an actual near-death experience, but let's talk about it. The descriptions, again, same themes as earlier, an endless torment, an impenetrable darkness, and a terrible, suffocating smell. Yeah, spoiler alert, hell doesn't smell too lovely. The other place? It smells like lavender, fresh laundry, daffodils, I bet. Hell? It smells like farts. It smells like dirty bananas and farts. It smells like your dad's sandals that he only wore for that one vacation, and then he put them in a box, and there's just the stink didn't air out enough. It smells like that. Number three. Bill Wise. You may recognize Bill's name. He wrote 23 Minutes in Hell back in 1998. Bill was always a devout Christian, so this experience, I mean, I'd write a book too if this was the case. Bill describes this afterlife experience as falling down a long tunnel into this dark, empty void, a prison almost, with, you guessed it, intense heat all over. Bill describes this heat as too hot to survive. It's unbearable. This is, of course, a common observation at this point. We've heard it many times in just this list. Bill was not alone as well. No, no, no. He was joined in the fiery pits by two ferocious beasts. Yeah, no humans, just angry devil beasts. This experience, as you could have guessed, lasted a whopping 23 minutes, which again doesn't sound incredibly long in hindsight, but when you're in the fiery pits of hell, it probably feels like an eternity, I bet. It's pretty bad. Once Bill returned to the much cooler land of the living, he wrote a book and continued to teach throughout Soul Choice Ministries. I don't want to write a book or go to hell. Both sound terrible. Number two, Matthew Botsford. So many of these stories are, of course, brutal. They start off with a tragedy in some way, shape, or form, like Matthew Botsford, for example. Matthew was attacked outside of a restaurant back in 1992. Now, normally, this type of injury, that would be it, but in order to save his life, doctors had to put him in a medically induced coma for 27 days. Some of the sights that Matthew recalls, yeah, I'm not, they sound a lot like hell. Sounds very similar to the land down under. He recalls dangling over a pit of magma, where he was chained up, surrounded by these four-legged, 
beasts. And what would happen is they would eat his skin and then his skin would regenerate over and over and then so on and so forth. So if this isn't hell, I'm not sure what is, to be honest. Being chewed on over and over, being devoured repeatedly, that's terrifying. He also recalls the emotional feelings, not just the physical ones. He recalls feeling incredibly lonely and isolated. That is, of course, until a massive hand pulled him out of the void, even saying to Matthew, it's not your time. Always that hand pulling people out. That's giving me hope, I'm not gonna lie. And finally, number one, Jennifer Perez. We'll finish this list off with events from 1997. Jennifer Perez was sadly poisoned by those who she thought were her friends. Pretty horrible, horrible stuff. Now, for a few days, she was hospitalized, where, of course, the illicit substances were causing her to fade in and out of consciousness, really bad stuff. Now, during this time, Jennifer saw what she perceived as heaven and hell. I opened my eyes and I was standing on a great road. I didn't know where it led to, but the first thing that I felt there was thirst. Yeah, I was really thirsty. I kept telling the angel, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty, but it was like he didn't even hear me. I started to cry, and when the tears ran down my cheeks, they completely evaporated instantly. Then there was the smell of sulfur, like burning tires. I tried to cover my nose, but that made it even worse. All five of my senses were very sensitive, and when I tried to cover myself, I could just smell the sulfur even more. Also, all those little hairs on my arms, they just disappeared. I felt all the heat, it was very hot. And then afterwards, she was thankfully guided back to heaven, where thankfully she got to keep on keep it on. Those are the top 10 real people who visited hell and lived to tell about it. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters. Also, if you're feeling anything dark and stuff, reach out. There's plenty of hotlines available. Until next time, bye. Impenetrable. 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 What the? Impenetrable. Penetrable. Penetrable.